Okay, so let's apply this to healthcare. It is a fact of life that all of us will, at some point in our lives, get sick or injured. The only way to avoid this would be to live a life similar to Jimmy Livingston from the 2001 classic movie Bubble Boy, a life that I assure you almost nobody would want to live. So what this means is that there is some probability that you are going to need to seek medical treatment over your life. So let's start thinking about that. Let's suppose that your income was equal to $80,000 per year. Okay? <clears throat> so every year you make $80,000. However, there is a 50% chance of getting sick and that if you are sick, the treatment for this disease is $20,000. Now, this is where we're going to get extreme. We're going to suppose for now that if you pay the money, you'll be cured of your current illness but will be equally susceptible to the, to the disease later and that not paying the $20,000 will result in death. Okay? We're also going to suppose that this is the only treatment. Again, we will come back and visit these assumptions later when we look at different treatments. Now, if you happen to not get sick, your income net of health payments would be $80,000. So we'll call this income not sick. And that would be $80,000 minus zero dollars equal to eighty thousand dollars. <throat> if you happen to get sick, however, your income net of health payments, <clears throat> so income, whoops, uh, when sick would be equal to eighty thousand dollars minus twenty thousand dollars equal to sixty thousand dollars. Okay? <clears throat> uh, because in this world where you do get sick you have to pay the twenty thousand dollars. So your expected income would be the probability of getting sick which is in this case fifty percent zero point five times your income net of expenses when you're sick which would be eighty thousand plus the probability of you getting sick times your income when sick, net of expenses, 60 grand, which is equal to $70,000. Okay. Now, it's important to note that while you will on average make $70,000 per year, some years you'll actually have $80,000 and others you'll actually only have 60. Most people don't like this high of a degree of variability in their income. For one, it makes it hard to budget for things, and the temptation to overspend is always there. After all, who among us has never wasted their money on something, only to realize later that we should have saved that money for an emergency that was perhaps somewhat predictable? Perhaps a broken down car, or a flood in your apartment, or any number of things that could, in principle, go wrong that you probably suspected might happen. Suppose that someone offers to sell you insurance for $10,000 per year and that, should you get sick, they will reimburse you the entire $20,000 to pay for your treatment. What would this actually accomplish? Now let's also suppose that there's no funny business, no claim is ever denied, nobody fakes being sick in order to collect the insurance money. In other words, everyone is always honest. So let's think about this. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to divide <clears throat> the world into two states of the world. Right? One is where you are not sick. Okay? And there you have $80,000 in income minus your $10,000 in insurance premium paying, minus zero dollars in medical expenses, and that's equal to seventy thousand dollars. You also have a probability of getting sick. And in this world, your income would be eighty thousand dollars, minus the ten thousand dollars for your insurance premium, minus the twenty thousand dollars for uh, medical bills, plus another $20,000 in insurance payments, and that is also equal to $70,000. Okay? 
Now, what this means is that regardless of whether you get sick or not, you are still going to have $70,000 in income every single year. In other words, you have no uncertainty in how many dollars you will have net of all of your expenses at the end of the year. <clears throat> Mathematically, we could show this by just simply saying 0 0.5, which is the probability that you will not be sick, times 80,000, and I'm just going to write 80, all these numbers are in thousands, minus 10 minus 0 plus 0 0.5 times 80 minus 10 minus 20 plus 20, and that's also going to be equal to 70,000. <clears> this situation is known as actuarially, actuarially fair insurance. The price of the policy is equal to the amount of money per year that you expect to pay on average for, in this case, your health, or rather your health treatment. What you should notice immediately is that you, the person who may or may not get sick, are no better off with the insurance policy than you were without it in terms of your expected income net of expenses. In both situations, you have an average annual income of $70,000. If you were responsible enough to save $10,000 every year on your own, you wouldn't actually need to buy the insurance policy at all. The trouble is that a lot of people simply are not very good at budgeting like this. We do much better when we have more certainty about our income per year so that we know how much we can actually spend. And so even though from a financial standpoint, this insurance policy would save you zero dollars whatsoever, you would probably buy it anyway because it effectively forces you to save money for your eventual medical bill. <clears throat>